This lesson will center upon atropine and how it relates to neural physiology. Remember in the past we've had lessons on the neuromuscular junction, uh, also called the motor end plate. And atropine has some interesting actions with these nerve processes. And I'm not uh, intending to give any medical advice here, but I just want to use atropine and show how it is uh, affecting neurophysiology. So atropine is called an acetylcholine antagonist. So let's break that down. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter released at the motor end plate and also in the parasympathetic nervous system. And an antagonist is something that works against a compound in this case. It also could be a muscle working against another muscle. But in our case, when we say acetylcholine antagonist, we're saying atropine works against acetylcholine. Okay? So that'd be very interesting. So if I said it plays a part, acetylcholine plays a part in the parasympathetic nervous system, then if you have something that works against that, it would decrease the influence of the parasympathetic nervous system in the dog, cat, horse, whatever mammal you want to talk about. So we could then have atropine showing us how if we turn down the influence of the parasympathetic nervous system, what happens? Okay, and just as a reminder, and you may or may not know this already, but this parasympathetic nervous system is sometimes called the rest and digest system, and some people have another name, feed and breed system. Um, and I don't have it on the screen here, but if you remember, the sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight system. So parasympathetic nervous system deals with things at rest, digestion, and then also reproduction. And atropine then, another in way, another reason we're interested in it is because of these actions on the nervous system, it is often used as a pre-anesthetic agent. So I can put that right up above there because I'm talking about atropine is being used as a pre-anesthetic agent. So now I want to look at this label that comes on an atropine bottle. I don't have any interest or, uh, I guess, business with the company that's shown on the screen, but I just want to use their label to show you a couple things. So let me highlight over here a little bit. We'll look at the other part of it in a little bit. So indications, whenever you read these things, from chemicals, drugs, whatever, indications means what it's used for. So in dogs and cats, it can be used as an antidote. Now that's interesting. An antidote is something that counteracts a poison, if you don't know that definition. An antidote is an agent that counteracts a poison. In this case, it counteracts poisoning by insecticides, specifically organophosphate insecticides. Okay. So then it can also reduce salivation. That means if it's working against the parasympathetic nervous system, then the parasympathetic nervous system must increase salivation when it's activated. So here we're fighting against it. So we reduce salivation. We reduce bronchial secretions, that's in the airways. And then also it reduces intestinal peristalsis. Okay, and as a pre-anesthetic adjuvant, we already said that. I think I said pre-anesthetic agent here. They're saying pre-anesthetic adjuvant. So it's got some interesting uses in animals that uh, we can highlight, and it's all because of the way it interacts with the nervous system. So I want to move this over a little bit more and show you how it's uh, the concentration in this bottle, I think the label's from a bottle, but I just want to show you how powerful it must be. 
Now here it says each mill has these ingredients. Well, a mill, if you remember, weighs one gram. One mill of water is one gram, and most of this is water. So we can say in one gram. So look at this. For atropine, in one gram of water, you have 0.54 milligrams of atropine. And if you remember, milli means a thousandth of a gram. So we don't even have one thousandth of a gram of atropine. And there's going to be sodium chloride in there. Benzyl alcohol is usually a preservative. And then most of it's going to be water. This QS means everything else being water. So very interesting. So I'd like to just talk about how those organophosphate insecticides poison animals, dogs, horses, cats, you name it, people, by the way, too. So here's a little history. Long time ago, insecticides were discovered to interact with the, may, the mammalian nervous system. And there's this famous compound. It's an insecticide. It started out as an insecticide, but it's called sarin. It's a nerve gas. And all these insecticides and a lot of these nerve gases inactivate acetylcholine esterase. Now, if you remember our discussion on the motor end plate, when acetylcholine is released, it diffuses across to the postsynaptic membrane and then binds to receptors, but then is inactivated rapidly by this enzyme, acetylcholine esterase. So now, a nerve gas or insecticides then if, it in, if they inactivate acetylcholine esterase, that means the acetylcholine is going to be around too long. It's going to be overstimulating the nerve or nerves. So now I want to just bring up some of this stuff, You some articles I found, some reading. And I just want to point this out. You can uh, pause it and read the whole thing if you want. But here's a little study where they were looking at atropine and another very similar compound that's an acetylcholine antagonist they're looking at it as an antidote against sarin okay so these are self-injecting auto pins you know you push it in your leg auto injectors are called but the interesting thing is that and i'm going to highlight this a little bit and blow it way up so we can read this under the introduction nerve agents chemical warfare uh, the nerve gases, nerve agents, are organophosphorus compounds. Um, they were developed by humans to be used as insecticides. The interesting thing is that nerve agents, now sarin and others like that, and then you could also read the insecticides. So it's organophosphate insecticides, which are used a lot of places, inhibit the enzyme, acetylcholine esterase. We did say that already. Okay. So then, and it results in accumulation of acetylcholine because it's acetylcholine is supposed to be chewed up. Anyway, very interesting. And when you got too much stimulation of those nerves, then you get increased production of saliva, runny nose, everything starts running. Uh, peristalsis is increased, and so you get defecation and so forth and so on. Okay, so I'd like to move that out of the way and then just show you a little clip of an article I found that talked about poisoning in dogs by these compounds. And I didn't realize the number, but here it says organophosphate poisoning in dogs, serious condition that affects thousands of dogs each year. So I didn't realize it was that prevalent. Anyway, again, you can see the actions here, but it's a dangerous insecticides and sarin gases and all that are dangerous but it's interesting to know that the antidote for those is atropine thank you I'm adding a little more to this presentation I forgot to sum up uh, the actions of atropine so if you look up here I just want to talk about the normal actions of atropine not in an animal that's been poisoned but just what happens if it's injected into a regular kind of animal without any poisoning and here we are so it slightly increases the heart rate because the parasympathetic nervous system actually is like a break a slight break on the heart rate okay so remember 
atrophy and then kind of lessens the activity of the parasympathetic nervous system. So it also, in a normal animal, decreases salivation. And let me point that out. Okay, decreases salivation, decreases gut motility, and that would be if parasympathetic is good for digestion, it probably helps with motility, and atropine does the opposite or decreases the parasympathetic influence, so it decreases gut motility. We already said it's an antidote for the poisoning, and that one article that I did a little clip out of said thousands of dogs have this every year, so it's very appropriate for us to understand that. And then finally, if you go to the eye doctor and get your pupils dilated, they dropped some atropine solution into your eyes. And also animals that are getting treated with atropine for whatever reason, remember I'm not doing any medical advice here, but animals could also have dilated pupils and I found this cute little cartoon that I wanted to share with you because it is kind of funny um, this gentleman the vet is on the left and he's wondering if the owner of the dog has also been taking some of the atropine tablets because the dog obviously has dilated pupils and so does the owner so the owner looks kind of guilty there doesn't he okay now I'm done